Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, today we'll talk about code of ethics uh, and conduct, its meaning, the scope and objectives, and some evaluation of selected codes, and what are IEM, BEM, and IEEE. Code of ethics or or code of conduct. Uh, what are they? Uh, normally, uh, the code of ethics and code of conduct are used interchangeably. Sometimes people will say code of ethics. Sometimes people will say code of conduct. Uh, however, uh, the code of ethics actually broader, which means that the code of conduct are more specific to a person or a company. So, code of con conduct is more specific. Code of conducts are guidelines. So it's a guideline for a specific group of professionals. So code of conduct can be for a group of engineering uh, engineers in a, in a in society. So the reason is to help them to perform their roles as an engineer. So it, it's a guideline to perform their roles as an engin engineer and also to safeguard their professional ethics. So as a guideline to their professional ethics. Okay, history of codes of ethics. So we talk about the history. It started in 1803, where the medical doctors came together to make the the medical ethics, and in 1852, uh, the civil engineers come together in American Society of Civil Engineers to make their own code of ethics, and you can see um, it started with the most important. Uh, uh, no most needed field for the code of ethics. So for engineers, if there's no code of ethics, maybe buildings that are being made or be built can be uh, can collapse. In 1880, the mechanical engineers make their own code of ethics. In 1884, the electrical engineers then make their own code of ethics. And afterwards, all the other professional engineering societies make their own um, code of ethics. So, what are the scope of the code of ethics? Okay, what's included in it? Uh, number one, it should include integrity of the profession or of the engineers. And number two, it should show the competency of the uh, engineers. So, you need to show that the engineers have certain competen competency in order to do a certain task. And number three, it also should include the individual responsibilities. What are the responsibilities of individuals, engineers, when they are conducting a certain uh, role or task? Number four, it also should include the re professional responsibilities, the, prof the responsibilities collectively of the engineers uh, in doing uh, a certain task. And number five, it should include human concerns. What are the concerns that may be uh, affected uh, when we do our when we are doing our work as an engineer so these five are important things we should be included inside the engineering ethics uh, now we'll talk about the objectives of the code of ethics the main objective is to establish a professional standard it's a standard so all of the engineers Wherever they are, whether it's in UK or US or Malaysia or other countries, they have a certain standard that will give the, the correct concept, image, credibility and also shows the sustainability of the engineering uh, profession itself. Mm, and also the Code of Ethics should have uh, the social and environmental commitment. So it should include the concern or effect to the society and also to the environment around us. And um, the Code of Ethics uh, should establish and maintain standards uh, by the engin engineering industry, whether it's the whether the engineer themselves or the company with the engineers. And it will show quality of service. If you have a standard, inshallah, we'll have quality of service and fair competition uh, mean that in the code of ethics there will be rules guidelines on bribery on things that we cannot do so the, it will ensure fair competition and quality of information it also have rules or guidelines on how what kind of information we can disseminate and things that information that we cannot uh, do so um why is the code of ethics important to engineer? Uh, number one, it's a symbol of professionalism. If you look at professional occupation, they will, ha they will have code of ethics. 
and it's a basic qualifying requirement it's a basic requirement so in code ethics it will be basic so if you are good you do better than basics the basics uh, better than the basics and it will give you edge in competition so you, because you have a standard you have a certain edge in competing in competing with others and also it will be in the end ultimate benefit for the profession so the profession will become professional uh, when we follow or we we follow the code of ethics adhering to the code of ethics it will give a good reputation good credibility and respect to the engineering profession so uh, it will maintain attractiveness and it will be a rewarding and respectable profession so people will respect oh you an engineer so you know that it's not just you know at the pasar malam uh, standard it has a standard a good standard where they have to follow uh, however code of ethics it has its own uh, limitation uh, it is man-made therefore there will be limitation number one limitation is code of ethics documents are normally uh, broad, broad guidelines it's not specific you cannot detail up every single uh, guideline for each single person for each si single situation therefore there will be an element of vagueness and this is especially in the area of health safety and welfare for example you say this situation should be safe for the um, uh, for uh, you know the the people inside the building so safe is vague uh, how safe is it so that so because of the vagueness it will come out number two uh, conflict in various codes so uh, so it means code of ethics one company may have their own code of ethics another company or society have their own code of ethics and because of the this vagueness uh, it will come up with debates you can debate about it and people can have moral dilemmas uh, which one to follow and number three the limitation is it cannot serve as ultimate or final moral authority as you know, uh, our, as a Muslim, the final moral authority is Al-Quran. So, Code of Ethics is guideline. So, it cannot be the final or uh, moral authority. And number four, the proliferation of Codes of Ethics uh, gives a feeling that the ethical codes are relative. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, example of the safety, sometimes the safety in this situation is maybe different in a safety in another uh, in situation. So, it will be relative. Here we'll talk about the major professional engineering bodies in Malaysia. There are three main professional bodies. Number one is the Board of Engineers Malaysia (BEM). This is the main uh, body where it's, a, it's actually a statutory body governed by the Engin Engineers Act 1967. Basically, uh, they can give out, can come up with rules to the Parliament so that all the engineers sh should abide in the country. Okay. And this is also the board, uh, the board that accredited your engineering degree. So we, the university, has to follow certain rules and standards to ensure that your certificate is accredited. Number two, uh, the professional bodies is the IEM, the Institute Institution of Engineers Malaysia. It's a learned society uh, under the Societies Act. Ba basically, it's a society where engineers come together to make activities and trainings uh, to enhance themselves and it's also a route if you want to apply for professional engineer IR you can also apply from IEM and you can also apply from uh, the BAM number three the Association of Consulting Engineers Malaysia ACEM it's a non-profit organization and it's mostly consisting of consulting engineers. So if you become a consulting engineer, you might want to join this uh, association where it will promote the interests of consulting engineers as a profession. So these three bodies have their own code of ethics uh, that suit their, to their objectives of each body. So it will be slightly different, uh, generally maybe the same but slightly different. Okay, that's all for the part one.